Hello everyone, this is Yana Smakula and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm sharing several wedding cards featuring dry and heat embossing techniques. My hubby and I are invited to a lot of weddings this summer and whenever we go to a wedding, I always love to give a handmade and not a store-bought card. So I thought I would make a couple of cards to have on hand for the upcoming events. Whenever I think of wedding cards, I picture elegant, clean and simple designs with some shimmer and sparkle and beautiful texture. I decided to use cut and emboss folders from Spellbinders to create the cards that I'm sharing today. These are a new kind of folder that already have the die embedded in the folder, so it embosses and cuts in a single pass and really saves you a lot of time. I'm going to be using these three folders for my cards. I love the design of these. And I think that these are the most perfect to create cards for weddings, anniversaries, or even wedding invitations. Let me show you how you can use these. I've already been playing with these folders and I have some leftover negative die cut pieces stuck inside. And just like you use your dies, you need to clean these negative die cut pieces to be able to keep using your folder over and over again. You shouldn't have this paper buildup in there as it might gum your folder and prevent it from cutting. Now these are easy to clean. If there are some pieces that are stuck in there, I just use my tool in one and I carefully push them away. I'm going to use several colors of cardstock today for my wedding cards. And this is paper from Simon Says Stamp, but you can also use any paper you like. I know that I will be stamping on my cards later, so I picked smooth cardstock for my projects. If you do not plan to do any stamping, you can use textured paper or even patterned paper to emboss and cut with these folders. Now it is best to use paper that is not very thick. You might have trouble cutting through 120 pound cardstock. I tried 80 pound cardstock white paper and I also tried this colored cardstock and I think this is 110 and it cut and embossed fine. Thicker paper will emboss, but it might not cut all the way. You can also use these embossing folders in most die cutting machines. To use it in the Spellbinders Platinum die cutting machine, you just place the folder on the platform and cover with just one clear cutting plate. So you lose one of the clear cutting plates when you use these folders. It's pretty easy. And you also have this information on the platform if you ever forget how to build your sandwich. I also dry embossed some craft paper, although I ended up not using this particular panel for my cards today. So I've already been playing with my folders and here are some panels that I've made. The first one features light gray cardstock and some heat embossing around it, around the edges. And I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. I also heat embossed a greeting in the center using that same embossing powder for a gorgeous look. Here's one that is done in pink, and this one is my absolute favorite of all. And you can see that the embossing here is not as thick. I mean the heat embossing. The embossing powder coverage is not 100%, so I have some pink cardstock showing through the heat embossing. I also heat embossed one of the negative die cut hearts here, and I used it as an embellishment for my card. I did two layers of embossing powder to make it slightly dimensional. Now, I also added an identical white embossed panel on the back as I was thinking of making this a single panel wedding card and I needed that white on the back to be able to write a personalized message. I also dry embossed some vellum and here I actually made a card base out of vellum and I embossed both the front and the back to be able to insert that pink embossed design inside. It looks fantastic and so very elegant. Now you do have to be careful with vellum as it can crack from all the pressure in the die cutting machine. This particular vellum is from Hero Arts and it worked really well for this. Here's another card with heat embossing over the dry embossing. And here I didn't mask the edge in the center and you can see that I ended up with a rather messy look to it. This was one of my least favorite attempts, but I still wanted to share it. Okay, to dress up these panels, I'm going to heat emboss a part of the dry emboss design with embossing powder. For this particular design of the embossing folder, I'm going to mask off the diamond shape in the center and will only heat emboss areas around it. I'm using masking paper here to create my mask. You can also use low tack tape, washi tape, even a piece of paper with repositionable adhesive. You just need something to create a straight edge for the ink. 
I am using white pigment ink and not clear embossing ink, as I will be using white satin pearl embossing powder from Hero Arts as a specialty embossing powder. And I think that this powder is the key to this whole elegant and wedding look. You know, it gives the most perfect pearlescent shine. Now, the powder isn't completely white. It's actually more of a clear powder with that pearlescent shine. So to make it white or white-like, I'm using white pigment ink underneath it. I hope that makes sense. And you're going to see what I mean in just a minute here. I'm going with a mini ink dubber and I'm also doing direct to paper technique to press the white ink pad directly into the paper. And this particular white ink pad is super, super juicy. This is a white pigment ink from Simon Says Stamp. You can also use a white pigment ink from Hero Arts or W plus nine if that's what you have. And you can either apply it with an ink blending tool or do direct to paper for a much heavier coat of ink. So I've added my embossing powder and I've heat set it with my heat tool. And here's what this looks like. I think it is absolutely gorgeous and so very fitting for a wedding card. I'm going to repeat this on all four sides to complete this panel. And I'm only doing one coat of embossing powder on each side. I thought about doing two coats, but I think that that would obliterate the dry emboss detail too much. Now you can definitely try doing two coats of embossing powder if you like. I also blended white ink onto the other panels and heat embossed them with the same white satin pearl embossing powder. I thought about using some other embossing powder colors for a change. But this is the one that has that gorgeous pearl shine to it. So I only use that embossing powder for my today's cards. If you plan to make a bunch of wedding invitations using this technique, you will probably need to get an extra one or two jars of this embossing powder as you will be using a lot of it. Once my panels were heat embossed, I moved on to creating sentiments for my cards. I used clear stamps from two stamp sets, one is from the sketchy landmarks from Alt New, and this one reads, For two special people on a very special day, may you live happily ever after. And another set that I used is Banner Sentiments from Paper Tray Ink, and here I used a message that reads, On your special day. Here I used either same white satin pearl embossing powder or detailed white embossing powder to heat emboss my messages. For the white embossing powder, I stamped messages in clear embossing ink. And for the white satin pearl embossing powder, I stamped that in the same white pigment ink to have that white show through. I also have a weird stack to the right here. And I already have one of the panels that I created adhering to a card base. I used liquid glue and I just needed to place something heavy on top of it. So I used my platform from my decadent machine and my main attraction to press that paper in place. Here are some photos of the cards that I made using these cut and emboss folders from Spellbinders and that white satin pearl embossing powder from Hero Arts. You can catch more photos of these over on my blog. I have four cards in total and I'm totally all set for the weddings this summer. I hope you enjoyed this card making idea and will give it a try using these or other embossing folders in your stash. Be sure to visit my blog for a full list of supplies. Thank you so much for watching guys. If you have any questions as always, please leave them in a the comment section below and be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't yet done so. If you are a subscriber but are not receiving new video notifications, check the bell icon on the homepage of my channel to get notified every time there's a new video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.